Hey there. Good. And there's Julio and Kelnick heading in for batting practice. And oh my gosh, it's Ichiro. We were able to flag down Taylor Trammell after he was done signing some autographs for the fans. Then you walk around to the edge here and you catch a glimpse of the field. All right, so I just pulled up to T-Mobile Park and just parked, uh, just had to document this. Um, so today is my first day being media credentialed by Major League Baseball. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can get some player interviews and some behind the scenes, you know, footage and that type of thing. I just wanted to document this and then, and, uh, I mean, I started my YouTube channel, you know, 16 months ago, just over 16 months ago. And I had no, no clue that it would, you know, get to this point. I mean, I, you know, envisioned that it would happen, but for it to actually be happening is a different story. Uh, but if you take nothing else away from this, if you have any goals or any dreams or any things that you want to strive for or to get to, just start today. The saying is one day or day one. One day you'll start it eventually, and if you have the one day mindset, then you're just gonna keep procrastinating, putting it off. Or today is day one, and you just have to do anything that pushes you in the right direction to where you wanna be long-term. And I mean, for me, it was just, you know, starting my channel, creating my first video. I had no background in media and editing and video creation, anything. I went to school for finance and marketing. Sure, there's the marketing degree, but you know, I didn't have any experience with actually doing anything marketing wise. Whatever it is for you, just go for it, start moving in that right direction and you'll never know where you'll be a year from now, 14 months from now, 16 months from now, a year and a half, um, five years from now. So just incredibly blessed, incredibly grateful. Thank you all for your support and uh, really excited. So go M's and we'll see what happens. So day one, I made the mistake of parking on the top floor of the parking garage. It'd take about an hour after the game to get out, but you live and you learn. So once you go down to the suite level of the parking garage, which is level five, you gotta open up your camera bags, they check your gear, throw some tags on your bags, and then you walk down this hallway to enter the stadium. Going. He was showing me how I'd get access to the field. Can you come out where the, the, the dugout is over there? Yeah and all the players will be out over here. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Then you head down the suite level. On the walls are all the Mariners legends, some history of the kingdom, and how the team got to where they are today. First you hit the broadcasting center, then beyond that is the press box where I'd be going. Don't worry, she checked me in the first time. When you first walk into the press box, this is what you'll see. There's some tables to sit at, a popcorn machine, there was a frozen yogurt machine, soda machine. Then you walk around to the edge here and you catch a glimpse of the field. These seats up here are where the ESPN, MLB.com, Seattle Time guys sit. Then there's some other platforms and balconies behind them. And then off to the right here is where the Root Sports people, the away team beat writers, some other people, and then myself were sitting. Had to rent the jersey, of course, and this is the view of where I was sitting the first day. Here's the gear I brought with me. On the left is a Canon EOS M50 Mark II, which is more of a vlog style type mobile camera that I've been using for a lot of my videos. On the right is a Canon EOS R8, which we just picked up and has a lot more capabilities. I'll be able to do some cool stuff with this in the future, including slow motion, 4K, etc. And a majority of this footage is shot on that EOS R8. As for the audio and the interviews that I'll be doing, there's two different pieces that go into making the lapel mic. One are these Rode Wireless Go 2 devices. The middle one is a receiver that plugs into the camera, and the other two are Bluetooth devices that send the audio back to that receiver. Then plugged into those Rode Wireless 2 devices are these Countryman B3 lapel mics, which really have top-notch audio. The links to all the equipment I use are in the description of my video, and if you have any questions, just let me know. 
The first day I was there, Lyle from the Marine Layer podcast was also there and he was able to show me around a bit. As again, this is my first time and I had no clue where I was going. And if you're a fan of the Mariners, go check out the Marine Layer podcast. They have more of a podcast style channel and talk all things Mariners. Once you reach the basement level, you turn left and directly ahead. And if we pause for just a second, you can see the pitcher's rubber to the left there. That's where who's ever throwing the first pitch gets their warm up tosses in. And hey, just saying, I still pitch in adult league baseball and I can get it over home plate in case you need somebody. Then you take a right and head towards the field. On the walls are painted memorable moments from the Mariners history. You also pass the umpire's locker room. You pass by Buner, Ichiro, Griffey, Felix. And yes, of course they have Big Dumper's playoff clinching home run from last year on there. Visitors Clubhouse is on the left. The 2001 All-Star Game. And then you make it out onto the field. Hey there. Good. Then I'd make my way around to the first base side of the warning track near the dugout, which is where I'd set up shop and get ready for batting practice. First day I saw Perry Hill working with a few youngsters. Might just see them on the Mariners draft board in 10 to 15 years. And here's my setup. I got the tripod and camera and a couple lapel mics. Infielders getting in some early work before batting practice. Then I spotted Shannon Dreyer with Tucker the team dog. Ham Swaggerty getting some work in with Perry Hill. Then oh my gosh, it's Ichiro. How are you? Then every day a few hours before the game, Scott Service holds a media session in the dugout, which is where all the big reporters go to ask him their pregame questions. Four or five innings of the game, we, we made some adjustments certainly against the Braves. Got really good stuff. After the coach's interview, it's time to go out and try to get some interviews. Check the lighting real quick, see how things look. And there's Julio and Kelnick heading in for batting practice. There were some clouds in the area, so the Mariners decided to put on the roof. Have to go back out and redo the lighting. And a rookie mistake, but you don't have to wear your badge everywhere. It's just when you need it. We were able to flag down Taylor Tremell after he was done signing some autographs for the fans. He was really nice, asked him a few questions. So he's heard of the year injured and you, you worked through your way back. Your first at bat in Toronto hit a grand slam. What does that moment mean for you? Uh, kind of a testament to some of the things I've been putting in the offseason. Uh, just stayed short, got a good pitch to hit, uh, stayed through it, and, you know, uh, felt really good, especially, you know, the biggest thing when you're coming back uh, start of the season is getting that first one out of the way, right. so that was that was pretty cool. And then Marine Layer got his questions in, and after Taylor, we both got Bryce Miller, but my camera was not on for Bryce Miller. So Bryce, if you're watching this, my bad, but let's get another interview sometime. Then we head back up for the game, and turns out those windows open up for the game. Quite a view for the game and an added bonus is that this was the first time the Astros were in town this year. During the game I edited and posted Taylor Trammell's interview as well as doing some live tweeting during the game and one of the rules of being in the press box is that you're supposed to treat it like an office and you're not allowed to cheer which was a bit tough especially going against the Astros. And if you heard that in the background, it's kind of cool because they announce stats during the game as it happens and different things like game time, attendance, etc. After the game, I got some stuff wrapped up, packed up, and headed out. 
I don't have access to the clubhouse yet for the post-game interviews, but hopefully I'll have access at some point soon. So that wraps up day one and I headed out to the parking garage and again, parking on the top level is a bad idea. Day two was a lot of the same. I did some work on YouTube and TikTok, created a short, checked some stats of the Mariners players before I headed down to the field. I set up shop again on the third baseline and out for some early work was Jose Altuve. If you think back to the World Baseball Classic, he got hit by a pitch, broke his hand, so now he's rehabbing. Watched him run the bases for a bit, do some fielding work. And he looks like he's pretty much ready to go. He was hitting some bombs. He hit like four home runs in a row here. After the Astros were done, Mariners had some BP, then it was another lighting test. And the ballpark started to fill up with it being Little League Baseball Day. So I tried moving the camera down to the dugout, hoping that would be a better area. But it just wasn't good timing, so I didn't get any player interviews that day. Then it was another media availability with Scott Service before the game. This was going to be Bryce Miller's home debut and his first start against the team that he grew up watching, the Houston Astros. With his profile, how much does it help to have those two variations of the slider? No, it certainly doesn't hurt. Um, you know, hitters, you know, it's going to look different. It's not like every curveball or a slider is created equal. He's got some, some variations of it. A lot of pitchers do that. They take a little off, they put a little on, they can tighten it up against lefties, make a little sweeper against righties. He's got pretty good feel for the pitch. Then I ran back to the press box, dropped off my camera, then made my way down to the bullpen to film Bryce Miller's home debut pregame bullpen. And if you want to see the full bullpen, that video is on my channel as well. Overall, it was a great weekend, definitely a learning experience and I know what to do for next time. I have some ideas for other behind the scenes I'd like to get and other player interviews. So how I see it is that another challenge is now starting, especially with the player interviews at first until they see me more often, me up there in Seattle showing my face, standing on the sideline, interviewing other players and start to feel more comfortable with me there. And it's kind of tough flagging guys down before batting practice before games. But that's one of the reasons why I'm going to start wearing my jersey on the sideline, the Couch GM jersey, because you know, I'm not just another reporter. I'm representing the Couch GM brand and I want to be perceived as someone that's more laid back, someone that a player can walk up to just have a conversation with and not feel pressured like they're going to get hounded on their stats or whatnot. You know, there's been a lot of work that has been put in behind the scenes that is not seen. Hundreds, if not a thousand hours that I've put into creating content for the channel over the past 16 months a standard video pretty much no matter what i'm making is going to take in the range of two to four hours a really quick video is two hours and especially with those player profiles those videos take closer to 10 hours due to the amount of research that i have to put into learning about who the player is where they came from what makes them interesting what story i'm telling going back and finding the clips of them in high school college the minor leagues making their mlb debut the different interviews that I want to try to pull from. And I have 27 player profiles so far, so do the math. And this is all on top of me working a full-time job in mortgage, you know, helping my clients with their real estate financing needs. And hey, I'm just saying my clients that I work with for mortgages, I get them a little something sports related to help connect to them on a personal level. So, but I'm very much excited to seeing where this goes because I really want to create a sports brand out of the Couch GM, not just a YouTube channel, but more so a brand that people want to represent and wear. I'm working on some really cool video ideas. I'm currently talking with Driveline Baseball on a few ideas. I played baseball with a guy in high school that is currently a pitcher on the New York Yankees. So that'd be awesome to get him on the channel at some point. And to that point, if you yourself are a major league baseball player, someone in the minor leagues, college, you name it, feel free to send me a DM and maybe we can collab on something in the future. Or if you know someone that's in baseball, I'd really appreciate the introduction. The next weekend I plan to be up in Seattle for media is the Pirate Series at the end of this month. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions that you'd like me to ask certain players. And you'll want to be at that series against the Pirates because the Pirates are a sneaky good team this year. Thank you again everyone for your support and for watching and we'll see you next time. All right guys, goodbye zone and don't forget it. <laughs>